Good morning and welcome to day three of Tarot Vlogmas. Um, I'm just getting my day started. I just barely made my cappuccino. Go ahead and light my candle here. Because I do have some year ahead readings that I have booked um, that I have to do when I'm done with this. I want to get my throat chakra really going. Um, and by the way, I just want to make that as an offering. I do have a current special right now for a year ahead tarot reading. Um, it's a 45 minute, at least like minimum 45 minute pre-recorded 2022 year ahead reading. It literally covers every area of your life, love, finance, career. Um, those are separate categories. Um, friendships, um, spiritual growth, and then it goes first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, biggest obstacle. How do you overcome that biggest obstacle? I'm going to <clears throat> calculate your numerology for your personal year as a collective universal year. We're going into universal year six, so hooray. Um, but that doesn't mean that you're going to have a universal year six. So I will um, do that and explain that for you in the video. So that is $77. Um, and for a 45 minute reading with me normally is a $99. And plus this is going to incorporate a lot more than just a basic reading. So I will leave my website uh, or Facebook page to book below in the, in the comment. So if you want to get a, a year ahead reading, I know most of you guys watching Vlogmas are probably tarot readers, but if you're like me, you don't read for yourself. And, um, if you're new to me, I am a full-time professional psychic a tarot reader. I work on several different hotlines. I have over 2,000 positive reviews. I've done over 7,000 readings just in the last three years alone. So I have a lot of experience. But anyway, this isn't meant to be a plug, but look how cute my coffee cup is. I just adore it. It says your future, or sorry, your fate <clears throat> is in your hands and it has like the palmistry on it. And look at that beautiful foamy cappuccino. If you do not already have yourself an espresso, what are you doing with your life? <clears throat> because even though my daughter works at Starbucks and I can get like a discount, the ease and convenience of like your own espresso and cappuccino at home is like everything. I got my, I um, got that for my husband last year for Christmas. So all right, so t day three Vlogmas, uh, the question is, what is your favorite card? Now, I kind of took this a couple of different ways because I have a favorite card, like out of all decks, like I have a favorite major arcana card, which is this. Then I have a favorite minor arcana card, and then I just have like a favorite card, like the first time I seen it, it just evoked so much emotion and feeling in me. So it's not like my favorite card in all decks. But like this is like my favorite card of tarot. Does that make sense? So we're going to start with that one. So my favorite just card is this version of the Hanged Man from the Ancestral Tarot from Julie uh, Kuchia Moffat or Julie, you guys know. What is her name? Um, but yeah, <clears throat> the Hanged One. And the first time I saw it, which I got the Ancestral Path Tarot probably about three years ago or so. And the first time I seen it, I was just like, yes, that is literally, I loved, I never really like was a fan or, you know, to me, the Hangman is a neutral card anyway. It's not po like positive or negative. Of course, really, you could say that about any card, depending on how you look at it. But um, some people tend to look at a stagnation or a pause or a delay. And yes, of course it can mean that, but I, I tend to look at it as a need for a change in perspective. But for me, like this baby in utero, like we chose to come here to this planet. We chose this life and we have free will and we had free will and we chose every experience that was going to happen to us like overall, right? There's not going to be anything like you're not going to get murdered um, and have not chosen that experience. Like we just, we signed up for everything in order for us to learn a lesson or to accomplish or clear a karma or to be that person for someone else. Like even the things that we do that are horrible, we most likely made a contract with that person in the preexistence to cause that wound to give that person an opportunity to grow. Because without those trials or tribulations, there would be no growth. We tend to, you know, in times of ease and times of comfort, we become complacent and we become, that is when we become stagnant, I believe. 
So this version of the hanged one, just how brave, I want to cry right now, like how brave are we and how brave were we and every little baby that decides to come here, especially at this fucking time on this planet and my daughter's pregnant with my second grandbaby and she, we just found out she's having a girl and I already have a grandson and like, I can't imagine you know, being born into this world right now and how strong of a person she must be to have chosen to come here right now. And that I believe that she has a very important mission, as we all do. But like I said, to have chosen to come down this time, how strong she must be. And she definitely must have been ready for a new change of perspective, right? So, um, I just love that card so much. So that's like my favorite all time card. And because I was going through this deck to find this card, um, my favorite major arcana card, I went ahead and just grabbed bull. I grabbed a couple different versions, but we'll start with hers, which, you know, the hermit is like my favorite, um, major arcana card. I identify with it the most. Um, you know, the devil is my card as a Capricorn. The strength is my card for birth. And I do like the strength card, but the hermit is just how I feel. Now, maybe that would have been different 10 or 20 years ago, but it's just how I feel. I'm a seeker. I'm an initiate. Um, I'm on the path of illumination. I want to know every, everything about the mysteries of this universe. Like I... I'm on a constant quest of knowledge. I There's never enough. Um, and it's kind of becoming a problem because I've definitely run out of room for books and classes and workshops and study. And so I'm definitely, you know, I identify with the Hermit. So I love that version of it. But of course, then there's the um, standard Rider Waite Hermit. And then even the Morgan Greer is very, very similar. And I've seen some really beautiful Hermits. I I love a Hermit that shows like a female Hermit as I am a female, but I, I just, I have so many decks that, but because I primarily work with these two decks right here, I often like just put my other decks away and they're more as like collector's pieces to me, but these are like my workhorses right here. So when I think about tarot, I'm thinking about these two decks, which means I'm basically thinking about these two images. So yeah, the Hermit is my favorite major Arcana card. And then my favorite um, minor Arcana card is the Knight of Pentacles. And I love this one of Morgan Greer also. I think it's so funny because if you've watched the latest, um, like what your favorite tarot deck says about you from uh, Katie Flowers, you know that she calls out Gen X bitches <laughs> with their Morgan Greer decks and I'm Gen X and I love Morgan Greer. So she was not wrong. Um, but I love this card and it, she is kind of that bitch, but she owns it and I love it so much. Like she's a woman of value and she values herself. And it's kind of like that cliche of nobody can love you till you love yourself. Nobody can value tell you. Nobody can value you until you value yourself. You have to be willing to put yourself up on that pedestal, and then other people will be able to see you that way. Um, she can be seen as kind of hoity snoity a little bit. Um, I don't think I'm hoity snoity at all. In fact, I think I'm really <laughs> kind of um, harsh and rough around the edges. However, I've worked really hard and mastered a lot of my manifestation techniques through. Uh, learning about, um, you know, these mysteries of the universe. And I have been able to accumulate a beautiful life. In my opinion, I've come from where I was raised and where, where I've been, what I've gone through from losing literally everything, cars being repossessed, repossessed right in front of my face and my kids, my, my kids thought the somebody was still in our car because they seen the tow truck come tow our car away. And my house got, um, foreclosed on and I lost everything. My, my, my ex-husband, you know, went through his drug abuse and literally pawned everything of value, our TVs. I lost everything. I'm not just saying that. And now I have rebuilt with my new life and my new husband and we have a lot of material abundance and I'm really happy for that. And this is what people see, but this is who I am, you know? And it's funny because even though the hermit doesn't need very much or want very much, he knows how to get it because he's been on this path and he learns how to alchemize and he learns how 
to transmute and he learns how to really, everybody wants to talk about the law of attraction, but when they see somebody who's actually executing it, they want to look at them like this. And uh, my friend and I, Rochelle from Amethyst Ascension, were talking about that the other day. So um, this is my favorite minor arcana card. When I see it come up in, for other people in readings, um, because mostly what I do are relationship readings, of course. So I think a lot of times I see it as a, if a guy is interested in a girl, he may think that she's too good for him. Um, he may think, you know, maybe she makes more money than him. You know, there's a ton of ways to look at it. But I don't know. I just love, I love this card, specifically the Morgan Greer. So... Um, yeah, that is my day three vlogmas and I can't wait to see some of your guys' responses and we will we'll see you guys tomorrow.